You're going to be riding me today. <laughs> Beautifuls, this is Aroma here, and welcome back to Mystic Destiny's Serendipity Beyonds. We are here explaining to them the whole situation, and Hikaru in this timeline hasn't learned the powers to freaking pull out the soul fragment. He is still learning. He is a fresh wizard, <laughs> Harry. Anyway, then maybe those Hikaru's had studied it further. If I had need and access to the knowledge, I certainly would have. Either way, I cannot help you. I'm left sitting there stunned as Akara begins to pack up everyone's belongings. What the hell? What should I- What should- What should- <laughs> What should am I supposed to do now? I guess what am I supposed to do now? How am I going to save Hikaru? Gallon, what am I supposed to do? I find the urge to tear up as I feel Shizuka watch me. If you have no way back and no way forward, then why not come with us for now? Perhaps the answer will become clear in time, or Gallon will finally answer you. I look at Shizuka in surprise at the kindness in her voice and the gentle smile on her face. My heart squeezes involuntarily, and I look down at my hands with a frown. How dare she, she, how dare she show me kindness now? Because she doesn't know. Sh Shizuka herself doesn't know what her powers will be coming out to in the future, I guess. What, what's this? You're bleeding again? Out playing with that Rai boy again, no doubt. He's going to get you into so much trouble one day. This is the seventh time you've come home bleeding. I'm sorry, Mommy. I know I ruined the dress you got me, but... But Taku is... Mom reaches out and gently strokes my head. I know I'm sorry. Takumi is your important friend. I just wish for you to be safe. I wish there was a way I... I wish there was some way that you could remain forever unharmed. What? I feel confused about everything. I'm. S Did I just get a flashback memory? Fla flashback memory of her point of view. The odd dream. No, flashback is something mother had said when I was still in elementary school. What did she mean by that? Why am I remembering this now? Hikaru puts his bedroll on his back and looks at me. There are no other good choices, and it seems you can find at least right. What's a sudden change of music? So you can help us out with what we are doing for now. His voice snaps me out of my daze. And what are you two doing? We travel around to help those that need it. No more, no less. We're on our way to a village now, about one or two days travel from here. I do not know what Japan is like in 500 years, but threats around abound here, so you will need to fight. I see. Well, it's not like I have any other choice. Damn you, Gallon. But I am curious to see what Japan was really like at this time, and this is my chance to get to know Hikaru more, and more about my mother too. I never dreamed I would have an opportunity like this. All right, I'll do my best to help. With that all settled, we all headed. We head out to the road, holding our, uh, holding only our belongings and many questions in my mind. We begin our strange journey together. As we move through the paths, I'm beginning to seriously respect my ancestors for traveling, not only on such unwieldy paths, but in such terrible shoes for walking. Man, what I wouldn't give for a pair of good sneakers right now. Already most of the day has passed. Most of our traveling has consisted of Hikaru asking me questions about the future. I sure hope there isn't some kind of prime directive law of non-interference crap amongst gods. Because if so, I've just totally broken it. I think back to how different Hikaru seemed while he asked me questions as we walked. Okay, got it. <laughs> Could you tell me more about the future? Uh, sure. What do you want to know? Everything. I mean, uh, just... What things are like, how they are different. I can't help but giggle. Oh, he's so cute! Well, a lot of things are different. I mean, I only know what Japan was like in the past because of history books, and I'm not sure how accurate those are. But, uh, there's actually technology like smartphones, which are completely different. There are proper roads and cars for one. Maybe this one? There are many roads poured and taped with asphalt. Asphalt? Is that some kind of liquid material? Yes, instead of stones or anything like that, it's a black stuff substance that makes flat roads. There are also cement sidewalks. Oh, cement is like asphalt, but white. I see, that sounds useful. I imagine traveling is much easier in the future. It is, and there are things we ride in. Like horses? No, <laughs> you're so cute. Sort of. They aren't animals. They're mechanical things. They're powered by engines. Ah, it all gets a bit complicated, but basically they're non-living things we can transport cargo and people in. I see. 
It all sounds amazing to think that one day I'll see it for myself. Shizuka chuckles. I think he should be a scholar instead of a warrior. Oh, he loves our mom. My heart. Maybe in some other life, I would rather help save lives. In a small, quiet voice that only I, I just barely seem to hear, Hikaru adds, I'd like to be a hero to someone. I'll be a hero. You could be my hero, but I'm sure you want to be my mom's hero. It's fine. It's whatever. It's whatever. I have goosebumps cause and chills because I'm upset. I had no idea Hikaru had such a curious side. It's cute. I guess it makes sense, though. He did choose to be a professor. I should tell him. Whoa! I still trip over my own feet and stumbles to the ground. Well, I almost do anyway. Carlos fast reflexes manages managed to catch me by the cl clothes before I hit the ground. I hover above the ground for a moment, my nose almost touching it before I'm <laughs> suddenly pulled up right. I stumble backward and then Hikaru's large hand briefly touches my back to steady me. He sure isn't gentle. Jeez. Are you alright? Yeah, thanks. I'm just getting really tired and I can't see well. Not without my glasses, anyway. I suppose they didn't have them back then. Couldn't they have left <laughs> left me with mine? Plus, I'm not used to walking in these shoes. I don't know how you guys do it. Shall we stop for the night, then? It was supposed to take us eight days to get to Sienna's village. We won't make it for another few days at this rate. We've already been on the road for seven. We probably could have been there, gotten there tonight or tomorrow morning. I can't help but feel miserable at what Hikaru is implying. But hey, it isn't my fault. I just don't have the energy to argue, though. I'm not sure what else I can do. I'm doing my best. Hikaru doesn't look at me. He only folds his arms. Shizuka begins walking, leading this time. Come, I believe there is a good spot that we can rest for the night nearby. Before long, Shizuka leads us to the promised spot, and we set up for camp for that night. I'm so tired that I end up passing out before I can even feel guilty for taking Hikaru's bedroll again. Sorry, my dude. Age has gone past. Cosmo the Demigod Day 3. Michiko's Log Day 3. This is probably the most embarrassing and unexpected moment of my life. We've been walking for what must be hours now. I seriously miss my phone. I mean, they don't even have watches here. Actually, correction, we haven't all been walking. And I, in fact, have been riding in cars back the entire time. I feel so lame right now. I remember back to this morning. Did I trip or something? Hey! Uh, yes? I jumped back from my car who was crouching down, peering to my sleeping face. Ah, uh, good. So you were awake. Not before you... We need to go. As I mentioned last night, we're already behind schedule. Hikaru stands up and turns away from me. You're going to be riding me today. Can't, you can't wear things like that, Hikaru. Excuse me? Are you a horse? <laughs> what? Hikaru turns around. Have you never ridden a piggyback before? Oh. <laughs> My car is like, oh. <laughs> Come on, wash up so we can get moving. Oops, I didn't mean to hit the log. Wait, what? A few minutes later, I had climbed onto his back and we set off through the forest once again. I feel miserable in about 10 different ways because of it. Lazy, ashamed, embarrassed, frustrated, the list goes on. I try not to think too much about the actual feeling or the muscles I feel through his clothes or I clear my throat. I do have legs, you know. I mumble for what's probably the fifth time. You do, but the legs are, <laughs> the legs are only useful if they work well. Mine do, yours don't. Well, thanks, man. I, I know. I know, okay, fine, sheesh, whatever. I'm a girl in the 2016 era, and I'm spoiled by transportation. I can't argue with him because he does, in fact, have a point. Still, I end up pouting at the situation I've been put in. I'm not some kind of helpless girl. I doubt that you are, but still, you should not worry. I am a demigod. This does have some benefits, not least strength and endurance outside of normal human capacity. Taking advantage of that is not a bad thing. Right. I still feel like little, a literal burden, though. Completely useless. I can't tell if it's just me or if everything he says is starting to sound like some kind of innuendo. Is this the real Hikaru? I can't understand why you might not like it. In that case, would it make you feel better if you spent your time learning? Learning? Yes, you are a sorceress, are you not? I... I haven't actually explained exactly who I am yet, but it seems like Shizuka figured at least some of it out. Does she know everything? My mother always seemed to know everything all at once. But since I'm pretty sure omnipotence, omnipotence would have been passed through on the uh, passed on through the ritual, I doubt she does just yet. I don't want to kill the move by replying to her question by saying, "Yeah, I am 
of the sorceress because you passed your powers and cursed on <laughs> and cursed onto me and kind of ruined my life. So for now, I just thought. Then I'd be happy to pass down some of what I know while we travel. I have lived a very long life, so I think you'll find my knowledge useful. And that's how I ended up with an hours long piggyback ride on my professor's back, learning magic with my mother in 1480s Japan. In all honesty, on, honest, honesty, I don't think I'm able to actually process everything that's happening. But seeing as Galen and Haruka still haven't sent a word back to me, I've got no choice but to keep rolling with it. We take breaks every now and then, though I can tell it's more for Shizuka than Hikaru, who seems impossibly unfazed at having to carry me. During the breaks, I actually practice spell with Shizuka when possible, and before I know it, the third day has passed. Wow, well, it's now day four. Ooh, this place is pretty. It's the night of the fourth day. It passed without much event. We've stopped at a beautiful mountain lake to rest. Hikaru has occasionally started commenting on our lessons with little remarks like really and interesting and has even cracked some jokes. It doesn't seem like the things Shizuka had been teaching me were things he knew either, so I can hear the wonder in his voice. Heh, <laughs> he really is such a closet nerd. <laughs> Probably gets along really well with Tetsuya. At remembering Tetsuya's name, memories of my timeline, all the timelines are destroyed come rushing back. Sitting on the ground now in front of a campfire, holding my head. No, 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 no. This isn't the time to think about that stuff. I've got my own mission. I'm adding words that aren't there, to be honest. I know what I'm supposed to do, sort of. I can. I have to hold out hope that I can fix all of that. If I just finish this first. Ikaro comes walking back into view just then. He and my mother had gone off somewhere to do God knows what. I still don't quite know what's going on with the... What those two, but this time Shizuka isn't with him. Ikara glances at me on the other side of the campfire. He sits down, one leg flat and an arm resting on his knee. He looks into the fire and my breath catches in my throat at the light at the way the light and shadow dances across his serious face. Uh um where is Shizuka? In truth, I'm afraid of the answer, afraid of what they might have been off doing. But I can't stand the thought of just sitting there admiring his handsome face on that like some creeper. Hmm? Oh, Lady Shizuka has left for now. I do not know where. Sometimes she does this, though. Since we were just outside of the village while, though, she should be safe. Suddenly, Hikaru's eyes snapped to mine, his gaze intense. I trust her completely. I see. <laughs> Why did you have to add that? Are you trying to tell me you don't trust me completely? Because I already know that. Okay, you don't have to remind me. An awkward silence falls as the fire crackles between us. Well, awkward for me, anyway. Hikaru seems content enough to have a staring match with the fire. He doesn't look happy, though. I wonder what to do or say as the minutes stretch on. Thanks to Hikaru carrying me for once, I don't feel tired enough to sleep just yet. I'm not even sure if Hikaru has slept once in the past few days. He is starting to look a little tired, I think. Come to think of it, this is the first time we've been alone. Ever, really. My mind ho helpfully corrects me. I think back in a flash to Seneca appearing in Hikaru's apartment, and then to being trapped in the space between worlds with what I thought was Hikaru's corpse. I shiver violently and Hikaru looks at me. Cold? No, not exactly. He's so sweet! Hikaru continues to look at me, his curious eyes penetrating my already weak defenses. I sigh. Uh, Hikazama. Why do you call me that? Huh? Because it's your name, right? Perhaps in the future, but I am only Hikaru here. Really? Then is it alright to call you that? I notice that you call Lady Shizuka by her first name, as if you're familiar with her. I have no right to be elevated any higher than her. The simple yes would have sufficed, but... Alright then, Hikaru. Would you mind if I told you more about what happened to you? I would welcome it, but I would also like to know your relationship with Lady Shizuka. You may not like that explanation. I see. I know I'm protective of her, and I know that I can be biased about her. But still, it is the mark it is the mark of a mature man to be able to listen without judgment. <laughs> you really love my mom, don't you? So I will do my best to patiently hear you out to the end. Very honorable. Then I'll tell you my story. And so I tell Akara everything, starting from the ritual, all the way down to me coming to the past. He only stops me once. Your mother? Lady Shizuka is your mother? I nod. Sort of. I'm not really real anyway. Just a copy of the real Shizuka. That sounds so sad every time I have to say that out loud. 
After that single interruption, he listens to me without a word. But despite his complete silence, not once do I feel like he's not giving my words his utmost attention. As I finish telling my story, I finally come to realize that tears are freely streaming down my face. Oh. I reach to scrub them away, but Hikaru's hand is on- His hands on my face? Already wiping them away from me. He drops his hand and takes mine instead. In his stead. In his- what? In his instead. Is this who Hikaru really is? Because he is... <sighs> he is such a cutie! We have been through a lot of suffering. I am sorry you were thrown into this. Hikaru seems as if he's in just as much pain as me. And I'm surprised for a moment, but then I remember. He's always crying. In my timelines. No, he really is a kind person. He always has been. He just has a tough time showing it because he's just been through so much. When I first saw you, I... For the first time, my car seems as if he's struggling for words. I did not know what to think. Trusting you was difficult. You look like Lady Shizuka and yet different. I could tell Amelia there was something different about you. You... You seem familiar to me in a way that she never has. Why is that? Wait. In what kind of way? Friendship way or lover way? He sighs. That is why it is impossible for you to be just a copy. That logic. I laugh despite myself. I'm not sure if I can fully understand or agree with that. Would it, would it help you then if I told you that I can see souls? Michiko, I can see that you have your own soul. It burns brilliantly and shines in a completely different way than anyone else that I have ever seen. Didn't someone else can see souls? Was it Shinji? So please do not say that. Never think of yourself as anything less than the beautiful soul that you are. You, you have overcome soul. so much. You have sacrificed so much just to stay true to the path you have chosen. I'm sure there are many more trials ahead in the future, but you must never forget how far you have come already. Yeah, there's no way going back. I'm, I'm already so far into helping Hikaru in my timeline. But I don't know if sacrifice was the right path, but ruining everyone's life for one person... Oh shoot, I'm way over time anyway. We're gonna just stop here. Oh, it's getting so good. I don't know, I don't even know what to pick. I'm probably gonna just read both in the next episode. So thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bamboo, the she's so, so she's so, so gay.